Morning guys, Dale here. How's it going? Today I have a brand new Acer Aspire desktop. Uh, the customer, it's brand new out of the box. The customer wants me to do a little upgrading on it for them. And I'm gonna, then after that, I'm going to do a clean, they want a clean Windows 10 install. And I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, guys, so here's the new Acer desktop. It's uh, not a bad little computer. It's got a 9th gen, ninth gen Core i3. I'll have a description on the screen there for you to see. And it's a 9th gen Core i3. It comes, it ships with eight gigabytes of DDR4, uh, a 512 PCI Express solid state drive. Of course, it's got the optical drive. It's got an upfront SD card slot. It's got USB 3.1 up front, both A and C type. Of course, some audio jacks. Got your power button here. Not a bad little tower. And on the back, got dual HDMI, a VGA port, four USB 2.0s, two USB 3.0s. So it's got a lot of USB ports. You can hook up three monitors to this. Got Ethernet. It's got built-in um, dual band Wi-Fi, the AC wireless, wireless five, and of course your audio jacks. So the customer wants to start with a clean slate but they want a little more storage. So what I'm gonna to do today is number one, I'm gonna upgrade the memory, take out the eight gigs from the factory and put in a, a 16 gigabyte kit from Corsair, their Vengeance LPX DDR4. It's the 2400 memory. They also want to increase the SSD from a 512 to one terabyte. So I'm gonna put in a pretty well-performing SSD, NVMe, PCI Express, to Gen 3 times 4. It's the XVG from ADATA. It's an SX8200 Pro. I've used a lot of these. They're very fast. They're really good drives. They're rated really well. I like them. And then, in addition to that, we're gonna, they want more storage because I guess they're going to dump a lot of stuff on here from their phones, video, pictures. So I'm going to add, there's a place in here I'm going to put in a traditional 3.5 inch hard drive. It's a Seagate Barracuda. It's 2 terabyte, 7200 RPM. So I'm going to add that as well. Get out of the bag here. So this is nice little traditional three and a half inch hard drive. So we're going to have one terabyte of SSD, two terabyte of mechanical hard drive, total of three terabytes of storage. And I got a couple of different types of SATA cables I may or may not use depending on what I get in there. So I'm going to take off the side panel. There's just two screws on the side here like any tower. And it slides right off. So to get to everything, you can see in here, the hard drive, the three and a half inch hard drive is going to go here on the back side of this plate, and then Acer was kind enough to give us four mounting screws for that. And then the PCI Express, the M.2 drive, is way up behind the optical drive bracket here, which we're going to remove. And it's quite easy, but it's way up in the back there. And of course, here's our two RAM slots. So the first thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to grab my handy dandy cordless screwdriver. We're going to remove these four screws that hold on this mounting bracket here for the hard drive. Let me lock my brakes. So we're going to remove these four screws. Pretty simple. Now, before I do that, let me take these out. Because I'm I'm going to mount that hard drive on the back side of this before I put this back in. It's just easier. And hopefully I don't mount it on the upside down, but it's going to go, basically the hard drive is going to go in here. It's like this. It's going to go in here like, like this because I got to give you access here to get to the connectors, the power and the SATA cable if need be. So I got those four screws out. And one more down there. Then all you got to do is just kind of tilt this out, and it comes out just like that. Well, I got it right here in my hand. Yeah, get it right. Yes, I've done these upside down before. Get in a hurry. Go ahead and put that on there right now. Oops, there. You got a nice little 
the bricoller in there. I'm just going to have to line those holes up. The old good old magnetic thing. Oh, good lord. Bear with me, I'll get it. towers like I used to. It was pretty much all laptops now. So now we have that mounted in there just like that. We'll save that for later. Next thing I'm going to do is we got to remove this faceplate here but before I get this out of here, we have to get access to our M.2 drive. It's up behind this on the, right up in the corner of the motherboard. I'm going to disconnect the optical drive right here. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Here's our power cable we're going to use for the three and a half inch drive. Then the power cable. It's a very, these Slim types use a proprietary power connector here. Just gotta get a hold of it. Then I'm gonna pull the whole optical drive out here. If you look right here, there's a little plastic tab right here. You just kind of push on it and it pops right out, just like that. Slide that out of the way. But now we have to remove this faceplate. So we're gonna grab these three tabs here and just kind of do that and just gently wiggle it off. Careful you don't scratch it when you lay it down. We still have to get this bracket out of the way, which is easy to do. Back on the front here, we got these three screws we're going to take out. Just long enough to get our memory and our M.2 drive in there. Just like that. And then this slides out of the way. So now, you can see, here's our M.2 drive right here. There's one, one screw, one pellet screw right there. I'm going to use a number zero. And of course, you don't want power hooked up to your computer, which there isn't. So I can grab my, I got a long handle, number zero Phillips screwdriver here to get in there. So a little tiny screw holds that in there. Carefully remove it. This uh, M.2. Again, three times two. So it's a Western Digital. Not a bad little drive, but we're putting in a better drive. Let's get that out of the way. Right, where's my? Crack this bad boy open. I use these a lot of these drives. They're nice little drives, and I'm not going to use the heat, heat sink. It's far enough away from the. CPU there, I just don't think we're going to need it, and it's not a gaming computer. I'm not putting a graphics card in it yet, so try not to touch your pins if you can help it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if this will fit on the back oop, on the back of this one here. Give that little cushion, I'm not sure, but I'm going to try it. Just like that. So we're going to put that screw back in. Yeah, the, the cleanest saw on this is going to go really quick. Come on, get in there. Snug it up. We're good in the slot there. So now. Before I get in there, I got two extra SATA ports here. I'm going to go with this SATA port right here. With a three and a half inch drive, and I believe I got two cables. I got the the L connector here. I believe that's going to work just fine for us. Well, actually, maybe not. All right, not going to do that. I'm going to use the other one. like that. Alright, I'm going to take out this 8 gig stick that's in here. There's just one clip on the top here. The other one on the bottom is stationary. So 
like a king sim. We're going to put in our 816 gig kit here from Corsair, the Vengeance LPX DDR4. Good RAM. Got nice little heat sinks on it. So we're going to put the bottom in first. Now this will support up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4. 2666. 2400, 2133. I'm not sure if I'll do 3200. Oops. It's not a super high end, you know, motherboard as you can see. Um, the board has places for two more slots, but this is not a super expensive computer. But there, now we got our RAM in. Don't need that anymore. Um, Goes for the optical drive. We gotta put that in there. So now we're gonna put our bracket back in here for our optical drive. Put it back in, basically in reverse. Let's wanna put that power supply power back there behind it. Make sure everything's accessible. Put our three screws back in the front here. I'm going kind of fast here guys but it's been oops, super busy so I gotta get her done keep everybody happy don't forget to check out more of my videos and subscribe that would be cool if you like what you see now I'm gonna hook the um, and put the optical drive back in then hook it up goes in the same way you took it out oh actually we're gonna do that later sorry um, so we got that. Let me hook up that. Yeah, I think I can get to that later, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in there right now. I got big fat hands. Try to get it untwisted here. So now we're connected there. And then the power cable. They're just hard to get to once you get, get this in there. So now we're just going to put this back in. It kind of slides these little notches here, goes in, and then we just kind of turn it, push it back in place. Cable's good, not way far away from the fan. You can see it's just fine there. We can still get to our connections for our optical drive. So I'm going to put these, these <coughs> three screws back in. We'll have plenty of storage on here now. And there is a empty SATA port on this board, so you can even add another drive down here, another SATA or um, SSD if you wanted to. Go nuts. So we got those four screws back in. You can see the RAM is right there. You can still get to the RAM without taking all this off, but I just wanted you to see what it looks like with the Corsair memory in there. And there's a PCI Express slot if you want to add a graphics card at some point. There's a lot of clearance up towards the front up there, so you could probably get a pretty big one in there. All right, so now these are a little tricky. Got to start over here on these three holes here. These kind of kind of hinge in there. Just gotta get these lined up just right. Let's go on. I've struggled with these in the past. Then it kind of pull it up a little bit. So I wanted to do that. There. But you don't want to, you want to make sure it's up tight over here on this side. Of course, all this plastic stuff will peel off. Let the customer do that. <clears throat> So then this bad boy just carefully without scratching the front, slide it back in there. And you can hear it lock in place. Now back on the inside here, we're gonna hook up the power connector first because that's 
Yeah, I'll give you a whole lot of extra for that. It's a pain in the butt. It goes right on the top. Ah, sorry guys, I gotta get my big fat head in there. There, now hook up your SATA cable. So that's that. So we got everything back in place, screwed back in. Slide this on just for aesthetics. Out. Want to forget this little guy. I'm gonna hook up my connections real quick on the back here so I can fire it up. Power cord, mouse, keyboard, HDMI cable. Don't worry about the internet right now. So I'm gonna put in my USB. Windows 10 installation drive here. I got videos on how to make these. It's it's free and easy. I'm just gonna put it in the front USB port. Oops, front USB port here. So let's fire this bad boy up, guys. <clears throat> It'll be a nice little upgrade for them. Now I got new memory, new drives, and they might oh it posted right away. All right, it's booting off our flash drive automatically, so we're just going to hit enter on the keyboard. Windows 10, 64-bit. It shouldn't take too long. I just want to get in here and make sure it's reading all of our drives. It should be. So we're going to do English United States, because that's where I'm at. Install now. But they'll be able to store a lot of stuff on here, obviously. <clears throat> Sorry about that little interruption earlier, guys. Said it's been one of those days. We're gonna go to custom, install Windows only. So here's our two drives right here. So you can see the first one here is our two terabyte, three and a half inch drive, and right below it is our brand new one terabyte NVMe drive. We'll choose that one because that's where I'm putting Windows, obviously. I'm gonna click next. And it's gonna copy the Windows files and it shouldn't take too long at all. That's a lot of these towers. Nice little entry level. Ninth generation Core i3. But now this one's going to have a little extra kick to it with that XPG drive um, SSD in there. I like those drives. They're a little lesser expensive than like a Samsung 970 Evo. But they're rated right up there with those drives. They're a little lesser expensive. Now, once I get the clean Windows install on here, obviously, um, it's going to be the 2004 edition of Windows 10. All right, guys, I didn't want to bore you with that quick setup part there, but it only took a couple of minutes. Now we're going to finish up the clean install here real quick. U.S. I'm going to skip the keyboard layout. We can always do this later. I always click I don't have internet. I mean, I do, but it just goes quicker. That way, Microsoft's not going to bug you about setting up a Microsoft account, which you can always do later. Continue with limited setup. That don't really mean anything. Just don't have a Microsoft account. Of course, you'd put your name in here, or a name, or a word. Next. No password. <clears throat> and I always like to turn all this stuff off. The only thing I leave on, really, is a location up there. But again, you can turn this stuff on and off. Anytime in the settings. No, we don't care about that. Not now. So now it's going to finish up here. And then, like I said, I'm going to get all the Windows updates. There's not too many with the 24 edition yet. Um, then I'm going to go to Acer's website. Because I do like to down for this one here, the Intel graphics. I like to download their Intel uh, driver for the video. Um, I just had a few little quirky things with it in the past the default one that microsoft tries to put in sometimes it just don't go it'll say in the device manager you know microsoft standard display adapter or whatever it says we don't want that so i just go to acer's website punch in the model by the way the model of this laptop if you want to come right over here or laptop sorry desktop it's the aspire t series it's tc885 ua91 and these are just the basic specs on it, but we changed a lot of this. It's got the Intel UHD 630. I always get the one from Acer for this model. It just works better. And they also got this on an i5 
version as well. But this is the i3. So now you can see we're in Windows now. First thing it's going to try to do is search for the display driver. Most of the time, of course, I'm not connected to the internet, but when you are, it'll search for it and it won't find it. But if you do it a couple more times, it'll find it. But that's why I go to Acer's website and just punch in that TC-885 and you'll be able to download the driver and install that separately. It only takes a few minutes. So there, we did a nice little upgrade. But first, I'm going to go down here on the start button. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to my file explorer just for that commit. Get rid of the flash drive. Now here's our brand new one terabyte XPG NVMe drive, but you can see the three and a half inch drive don't show up in there because it has been allocated. So that's easy. We're just going to go down here and right click on the start button here. I'm going to go to disk management. Open this up full screen. And now here's our drive. Just going to hit GPT, yes. Open this big screen here. So here's our new two terabyte Seagate Barracuda. 7200 RPM R drive. So all I'm going to do is right click on it, click on new simple volume, just accept the defaults on these. Unless you want to partition that drive up, you can. One, two, three partitions. But I'm just going to leave it, go with the full two terabytes. So I'm going to take the defaults, click next, next. Got a drive letter, of course, NTFS. You can put a volume name in here now, or you can just right click on the drive later in this PC and do that anytime. So I'll just leave it like that. Click next. And click finish. You can see it's doing a quick little format on it. It'll pop up here in a second. New volume right there. So now you can see right here is our two terabyte drive. And again, just right click on it, scroll down to rename, name it whatever you want, really. Call it stuff. All right. So there, did a nice quick clean install. I'm going to get all the updates throw some browsers and a few other extra things on here for the customer. Um, now we don't have any unnecessary bloatware, so to speak, from, from anybody. You can go into the Windows, the Microsoft Store and get some of your apps in there as well. So again, thanks for watching. I hope the video was helpful. Um, check out more of my videos and don't forget to, to subscribe. Y'all have a great day and thanks for watching.